Wind turbines don't last forever. The metal towers can be recycled normally, but the blades, a mixture of fiberglass, wood, and plastic, cannot. By 2050, there could be more than 40 million metric tons of blade waste piling up worldwide. Some recyclers grind blades into a mixture that fuels cement manufacturing. An Ohio startup says it has a better way, turning intact blades into outdoor furniture for public spaces. So what's the best way to handle this kind of waste? And just how much trash does wind energy produce? With routine maintenance, a wind turbine can last about 30 years. But things like lightning strikes and extreme weather can shorten their lives. Just one blade is about as long as the wingspan of a large commercial jet, like a Boeing 747. And that's just on land. Offshore turbine blades can be twice as long. Both types are made mostly of fiberglass, which is generally made by squeezing molten glass through tiny holes, creating fluffy glass fibers, which can be coated with resin and made into sheets. Factories glue sheets of this material together with a special kind of resin that, once it sets, can never be melted again. That makes conventional recycling, which usually involves melting and reshaping, impossible. That's where Canvas steps in. The company gets blades from around the continental US. They're too big to transport whole, so contractors slice them into quarters before shipping. They arrive like this, and the first step is slicing them even smaller. This diamond-encrusted rope grinds and disintegrates the fiberglass instead of sawing through it to avoid splintering. One slow, steady slice takes about four minutes. The team calls these pieces fillets, and each one will become the base of a final product. A single turbine blade can produce quite a few of them. It really depends on what products we are yielding, but typically anywhere from 10 to 45 fillets per blade. Inside the wash bay, workers hose them down to remove dirt and grease that built up during use. So every blade gets power washed in a system that takes all the water we use and then recycles it so we're not wasting water in our process. Some fillets have extra material inside them that craftsmen saw off and sand down. They spread a filler putty to even out the surface and smooth over any damage from their time in the air. They can get hit by hail, they can have bird strikes, some get hit by lightning. Once the fillet is a smooth, hollow shell, the team builds a metal frame inside of it. These aluminum beams will form the main support for the seat of a bench. Welders secure them into place. The founders of Canvas drew design inspirations from pilot projects around the world. We were inspired from bike racks and bridges that were being built over in Europe. What we wanted to do was develop a series of products that could be created at scale. But one challenge is that each fillet has a totally unique shape. Each one is different, even if it was right next to the other one in the blade. The 2D scanning tool outlines it exactly. Every little bump, every little divot in that blade is recorded. These computer-controlled routers read the digital outline and cut a piece of wood to match, which is called a subfloor. Workers then glue the subfloor onto the metal frame. We use a composite board so that the cavity doesn't need to be filled with material to its entire depth. With all the main pieces in place, it's ready for painting. Painters make a two-part epoxy by mixing ingredients that form an extra durable seal. It makes it low maintenance. Graffiti comes off. It's not that easy to scratch up, so it'll look good for a long time. The painted bench is ready for finishing touches, like a soft rubber seat. A worker measures and adds granules made from another company's manufacturing scraps that will become the top layer of the seat. Then he weighs a liquid binder 
and adds it into the mix. The team spreads this mix over a base layer of recycled granules made of old tires and shoes. None of the craftsmen at Canvas worked on wind turbines before. They're mainly builders and skilled trade workers. Taking something that's so big and turning it into a, a functional piece of furniture, art, that, yeah, was amazing. Employees like Joe Koger are happy to give turbine blades another chance. They may have had a life on a farm doing their job. I think they deserve to keep, keep on going. Meanwhile, wind turbine designs are changing quickly, becoming bigger and more efficient. But that means older wind farms are falling behind the times and need to be replaced. This is called repowering. It can make a huge difference. A wind farm in Spain replaced 69 aging turbines with just seven new ones. And they're so much more efficient, the repowered farm creates twice as much electricity as before. So farm operators have a business incentive to upgrade their fleets. But of course, that contributes to the growing piles of leftovers. Once fully assembled, the team prepares their products for delivery. Just one of these benches weighs over 600 pounds. The team screws the products to boards, which they strap into place on the truck bed before tying everything down. Five benches, four planters, and one picnic set are headed to the Great Lakes Science Center in Cleveland. It tells that story on what happens to things that we use, how are things recycled, and what is the second life of them. The center didn't pay anything for these. Instead, sponsors cover the costs, a total of about $42,000. There were local restaurants and bars, there were law firms and uh, health and fitness centers, and then there were some uh, national brands. In return, those businesses get their name on the pieces next to a QR code that leads to more information. They inherently have a great story because they're made of retired materials. Or customers can buy the goods directly from Canvas. Some of the products at the Science Center are a bit more ornate than the others. These are part of a program called PAR, which stands for Primed and Ready. For that program, the team paints the furniture with only a coat of white primer, creating a canvas for artists like Tessa LeBaron, who get paid $1,000 per piece. I'm used to painting a mural that just like one flat surface, so it's interesting and fun to work with something that has curves and to create like organic elements. For now, canvas only takes blades from land-based turbines, not the much larger offshore ones. And in general, projects like this are not common. In the U.S., the cheapest option is to send fiberglass blades to landfills, which has caused some controversy. In 2020, images of a turbine blade graveyard in Wyoming went viral, sparking backlash. Meanwhile, in Europe, which has much less landfill space than the U.S., at least four countries have already banned landfills from accepting turbine blades, encouraging other options like burning them for energy or chemical recycling. With nine months of manufacturing under their belt, the Canvas crew has placed more than a thousand of their products around the U.S. The venture isn't quite profitable yet. We made eight dollars this year. Uh, <laughs> no, um, 2023 will not be a profitable year as a startup, but we definitely see a, a bright future. So far, the company has repurposed about 250 blades, but the founders estimate they'll reach 3,000 in 2024. However, not all of them will be upcycled. We also see blades that come in too damaged um, to actually be turned into our products. In 2024, the founders say about half the blades they get will be upcycled and the other half will be shredded. One of the first blade recycling efforts in the U.S. piloted this technique. A company called Veolia grinds blades into a soft mixture that looks like mulch it pays cement factories to burn the material as fuel in place of coal. The main goal is keeping blades out of landfills, but Veolia estimates it could also reduce CO2 emissions from cement making by about 25%. So we will have our own resources in-house to grind that material down, our manufacturing scrap and damaged blades, to send it to cement kilns, which is what Veolia does. 
Over time, they hope a higher percentage can be upcycled, and ideally new innovations unlocked. There's people working on a process called pyrolysis that hopefully can break the material back down into oil and glass fiber. Experts say fiberglass blades are not going anywhere anytime soon. The problem with using metals is that they're heavy. Fiberglass gives us the same strength, the same properties, but for much lower weight. It's also pretty cheap. It's hard to find a replacement that can match all these qualities. But lots of people are working on the issue of blade waste, including another business that's rethinking turbines entirely. A company called Heirloom is building wind farms that look completely different, with no giant blades. The company says it costs about a quarter of what a typical wind farm does to build. If something like this took off, it could be an issue for Canvas's business model. But the founders are confident they won't run out of material. For the next 10 to 15 years, we will still have thousands, tens of thousands of blades that need to be recycled or upcycled. So we support solutions like Heirloom. So if wind energy creates so much waste, should the world use less of it? Well, basically, every form of energy leaves waste behind, including burning fossil fuels, which creates billions of tons of planet-warming CO2 every year. In terms of solid forms of trash, solar panels become tricky to recycle electronic waste, coal burning produces toxic coal ash, refining oil leaves behind sludge, and so on. One study estimates there could soon be 400,000 metric tons of blade waste piling up each year. But when you line that up with other types of energy waste, turbine blades are on the low end. And to put it in perspective, global household trash outranks it all. With any movement forward, there are going to be hopefully a lot more pros than cons, but there will always be cons. There are always people waiting out there to highlight the cons of anything. Experts also say there's room for optimism, even when it comes to tricky fiberglass waste. If you throw enough money at problems, then you can usually solve them. And money is now being thrown at these problems, and there really are good solutions coming out.